community that we serve is low literacy, low education, as well as low income. It's a community that's very, very much in need of uh, support and services. It's such a limited resources available out there right now. It's just overwhelming for a lot of these people. Health is not detached from the social aspects of the daily living of patients. So we need to be sensitive to the social needs. We find ourselves not just treating the physical health of the patient, but also the mental health. We're so complex. We need to focus on the wellness of each patient and human beings. Without centers like ours, I don't even want to think what may happen uh, to the community that, that we serve. Especially when situations like this pandemic uh, appear. Tonight in Los Angeles, a local emergency as six new coronavirus cases have been confirmed. At the time, I think we all thought it sounded like it was going to be a really bad flu season. Fast moving developments in the coronavirus emergency here in Southern California as the World Health Organization officially declares the outbreak a pandemic. The first I remember reaching out and having conversations with our chief medical officer and saying, you know, what, what do we need to be watching and, and how do we need to prepare? And then boom, things got real. That the shutdown is in effect here in LA. We sent everybody home who could go home and we had skeleton crews on site to take care of anybody who would walk in. We went into lockdown and it was scary. Our department saw a surge of, of people wanting to access help. They were under a lot of stress, a lot of fear. Many of the families that we serve were first responders were on the front line, essential workers. A parent will go out and get exposed. So how do you quarantine in one bedroom with a family of four or five? What do you do? There were people in our panel of providers who had family members who were ill with COVID. There were people who themselves became ill with COVID. There wasn't like a, a textbook, or a formula. It was improvised, you know, make adjustments every day. Even before there was official legislation saying that you would get paid for it, we moved to telehealth. We canceled 10,000 appointments and converted them to remote appointments. It was not easy, believe me, it was not easy because they don't know they don't have any idea why, what, what is Zoom. We need to teach them how to use the taxi me. With the phone, uh, we are like this. Okay, put your name over here, push over here. Once we were able to get vaccines, we hit the ground running and started to vaccinate as many of the community members that were eligible to get their vaccines. We've delivered thousands of vaccine doses, and we've really worked hard to make sure that we're getting to the toughest to reach populations. I'm a dentist here at Eisner, and I've been here working with the vaccination clinic since January. I volunteer whenever I get the chance, and I'm excited to see everyone get vaccinated. Caring is our DNA. I mean, it's everything that we do, and our team members exemplify this from start to finish. From our case managers to our clinical supervisors, all have a passion for serving the underserved and the underinsured. They're here by choice. I can't really think of a staff member that's here because this was the job that became open. I think they really fell in love with the mission and heart of Eisner and they've been here for a long time. We are here for the community. We're here for your kids, we're here for you, for your prenatal care, uh, dental care, whatever, mental health. You know, this is somebody that we need, we need to help. Where else are they gonna go? Regardless of your documentation status, regardless of your insurance, regardless of your language, we're going to do our best to make sure that you get what you need. And that's been true for a century, and it didn't change when COVID came in place. I never believe me, believe me, Eisner is the best. I was working before in other places, but Eisner uh, filled my, my heart. They are doing a very good job, very, very good job. And it's not easy. For 101 years, Eisner Health has been in Los Angeles providing care that everybody needed. And it doesn't matter who they are or where they come from or what their need is. It's just remarkable to think of the dedication to making life better. I can't think of a better legacy than that.